Now let's look at another example of a static hazard which uh, occurs in a circuit with a very large number of uh, logic inputs, meaning that we cannot use the Carnot map approach towards solving it. In this case, we are given the uh, circuit and uh, we are required to identify the uh, number and kinds of static hazards that can occur. So this is not a circuit where a dynamic hazard can occur, it's just static hazards. And so we have to identify uh, which variables will be responsible for, for these hazards and what kinds of hazards may occur. Uh, and then we have to solve these hazards uh, if we find them. Now, this circuit doesn't really give us um, an indication of, um, of the underlying structure, whether it's the uh, uh, two path that meet at an AND gate or the two path that meet at an OR gate that we are used to. Uh, because we have a, fun a circuit that is mainly composed of NAND gates and uh, AND gates. But if we write down the logic function, if we write down the logic equation of the function Z, we, we will be able to find the kind of hazard um, very easily. But if you look at the circuit, you will be able to tell which variables could potentially cause a, a glitch or a static hazard. Now, um, we have variables uh, all the way from A down to H. Uh, any of these could be responsible for a static hazard. Uh, however, for a static hazard to occur, we have to have at least two appearances of the input variable. So all the input variables that have a single appearance, that make only a single input or a single appearance, are um, they don't have the potential to cause a, uh, a glitch. So if you look at these variables, the only ones that have multiple appearances, the only ones that appear more than once are A and B, because A appears twice and B appears twice. So you have A and B as potential variables that can trigger a static hazard. Uh, if we find that both have the potential to do so, we have to deal with each individually and we have to solve each individually. All of the other variables make only a single appearance, so they are clear and they cannot trigger a static hazard. Now, let's go to A and let's look at um, the two other conditions for a static hazard to occur, because the variable, uh, if it makes uh, a couple of appearances, doesn't mean that it will have, that it will cause a glitch. There are two other conditions. It has to have a differential delay and it has to make an appearance as a true and a complement form at a gate. So the gate at which they meet is obviously the final NAND gate. Now we have to trace A and look at how it makes an appearance at the final gate. So A, when it passes through the first NAND gate, is going to appear as an A bar. It's going to pass intact as an A bar through the AND gate, but it will make an appearance as an A after the second NAND gate. Through the bottom branch, A is going to make an inversion through the first NAND gate another inversion through the second NAND gate, and a third inversion through the final NAND gate, which means that they meet at the final NAND gate as A dot A bar. So actually it's A dot A bar all bar, right? So they meet at the final NAND gate in, in their true and in their complement form, which means that they have the potential to cause a hazard. Now, they will cause a hazard if they have differential delay, which is a possibility here because the top path goes through two NAND gates and an AND gate. The bottom path goes through three NAND gates, so matching the delays between the two is not going to be possible. Now, if we are asked to identify the kind of hazard that A will cause, it's obviously a static one hazard. This is because by De Morgan's theorem, the NAND gate will cause these two to become A plus A bar. So don't be fooled by the fact that the final gate here is a NAND gate and think that this is going to be a static zero hazard. What you're looking for is a structure that looks like A plus A bar, which indicates a static one hazard, or A dot A bar, which indicates a static zero hazard. Now, the other variable that makes a couple of appearances here is B. And so we have uh, B going through the top branch uh, through the first NAND gate, it's going to appear as B bar. The second NAND gate as B bar. 
the third NAND gate as B. Through the bottom branch, it's going to pass through the first NAND gate as B bar and the second NAND gate as B. So it makes uh, transitions and meets at the final NAND gate as B dot B all bar. This is not going to cause a static hazard. So just because a variable has a couple of paths through this circuit doesn't mean that at the end you will have a hazard because of this variable. You also have to have uh, true and complement forms making uh, uh, a meeting at a certain gate, which didn't happen in this case. Now, we know already that uh, variable B is not a variable that we should worry about. The only variable that can cause a glitch at the output is variable A, and the glitch in this case is a static one hazard. So this is the uh, logic expression of the, of the circuit above. It's just uh, a direct translation of the, uh, of the gates that we have uh, on top. And we have to think about what values for the other variables, other than A, that will bring out the structure A plus A bar. So basically, we can do this from the logic equation, and we can also do it from the, uh, from the, from the, uh, from the circuit diagram. In this case, it's actually a little bit easier to do it from the circuit, but you can also do it from, from the equation. It doesn't really make any difference. Let's do it both ways. So from the circuit, we want this A to be able to pass through the NAND gate, which means that B has to be equal to 1 in order to allow it to pass through. It will pass through as an A bar, and this is an AND gate, so D, is also, has, uh, D also has to be equal to 1. Otherwise, it will mask A bar, which passes out as an A bar through this AND gate. E and F both have to be equal to ones. Otherwise, one of them is going to mask the output to zero, which will cause this NAND gate to also be masked. So E and F have to be equal to one. In the bottom path, C has to be equal to one in order to allow A to pass intact. G also has to be equal to one. And because we want this output to be equal to, um, to, be equal to one, then we want either of h or b to be equal to zero. So pay attention to this. We want this input of this NAND gate to be equal to one. Now, because this is the output of this NAND gate, we want h and b to be equal to uh, either zero, one, one, zero, or zero, zero. This will cause the output of the NAND gate to be equal to one. But recall that in the top branch, you forced B to be equal to 1, which doesn't allow us to use any of these options except for 0, 1. And so H has to be equal to 0. And so basically, all of the other variables are equal to 1 except for H. So if we think of them as A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, then H is equal to 0 everything else is equal to 1, and A is the culprit variable that can cause the glitch. We can also do it from the uh, logic equation, because if this A is going to make an appearance, this B has to be equal to 1. Now, all of these guys are multiplying this E bar, so that means that all of them have to be equal to 1s. If we look at the other branch, this A has to make it out, so this C has to be equal to 1. Now, this G also has to be equal to 1 to allow these guys to make it out. But this BH all bar has to be equal to 1, which means that one of either B or H has to be equal to 0. B was already set to 1, so that only leaves us with one uh, uh, option, which is H is equal to 0. So this is the input combination that allows the glitch to appear at the output. This, these are the conditions under which the glitch could make an appearance. Now, why does the glitch appear? It appears because for this input combination, regardless of the value of a, whether it's 0 or 1, we should have a function that is equal to 1. So z has to be equal to 1 for this input combo, regardless of the value of a. However, for a certain transition, for this transition, we are relying on a to keep the function equal to 1, because these other guys are not going to keep the function equal to 1. And we are relying on a to be equal to 1 because we have the expression a plus a bar. 
which is normally equal to 1, but because of differential delay, it's going to be, both of them are going to be equal to 0 for a limited period of time, which is enough to glitch. So how do we remove the glitch? We remove the glitch by adding a, a product term which masks this transition. And that product term is going to be on, it's going to be 1 for this input combo of the other variables. So the product term that we add is B, C, D, E, F, G, H bar. And we basically, all we do is we add one product term through one huge NAND gate that includes all of these guys. And so we just have to add this through an OR gate, and this will mask Z and will cause it to remain equal to 1. This doesn't change the functionality of the circuit because when this forces the function to be equal to 1, that's correct because the function is equal to 1 for this input combo regardless of the value of A because it is equal to 1 whether A is equal to 0 or A is equal to 1.